for the intro and, and all the information. Um, like you said, my name is Hope Foley, and I'm going to be talking today about spatial data. Um, I, I, Dan, I didn't think about it till now. I usually ask people how many people are, are using spatial data now. Um, if you are, uh, make sure to let me know in the chat window. Not many people are actually using spatial data, um, and uh, I, it kind of grew, it kind of got under my skin, and I'm pretty passionate about it, but um, I, I keep continuing to kind of um, do a, an incarnate of a spatial data presentation. I've, I've been doing one since the beginning, um, since it, it first came out. Um, it, it, it really is, I think, um, a great feature of SQL Server that is only going to be more important as you know every all the phones and devices and everything has location-based information. I think it's just going to become more important. So, um, so we will um, we will be talking about that. Here is the me spiel slide. Um, actually, I, <laughs> this is my one and only presentation where I am. Uh, I'm, I've been joking with folks. I'm an unemployed bum right now. I'm. I've been working for the past two years as a business intelligence consultant with um, Blue Granite, but I start Microsoft actually uh, next week. So um, I've, I've been a SQL Server for quite a while, and um, you know all of this stuff. This last point, um, I always mention this. Um, I'm a big beer snob. I don't waste calories on on bad beer. And the reason I always put this in my intro slides is because it has a way of creeping into my demos a lot. So if you see beer-related data, that's that's why. So, um, so like I mentioned, um, talking about spatial data, but um, since not many people are actually using it, I uh, want to kind of go over what it is, some fundamentals of it. I'm going to try to get through some of the the... Um, some of that, the concept stuff first. We'll get through the slides, and then we will um, we'll do most of our our stuff in demos. And it, it definitely it, does, it doesn't count unless you have a real world demo. So I, at the end, we'll do a um, a real world demo of um, of using spatial data. And then wrap up in questions. So okay, so. What the heck is spatial data? Some 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 people that are are heavy into the GIS fields and everything, it um, I'm going to be talking about spatial data mostly as it or I'm going to be talking about spatial data as it exists inside of SQL Server. So some of the concepts of, outside of, of SQL Server apply, but um, just wanted to to let folks know that. And so this here is the giant fluffy definition of what spatial data is. I'm a very bullet point, short and sweet kind of gal, and this is my definition of what spatial data is. The, the laying out of shapes on a map. Is this in, I'm not sure if you guys, that's in your guys' way too. Sorry if it is. Um, so the laying out of shapes on a map, and note the map in quotes. Um, the reason the map is in quotes is because of this. So, when I say laying out of things on a map, this is probably an example that would come to mind first. This is um, <laughs> this is actually this is a, a reporting services report from a previous incarnation of spatial data presentation. This is actually um, the um, I, I'm from Indianapolis. If I didn't mention that, um, the microbreweries of Indiana, <laughs> of Indiana. So I have a, I have a large brewery data set. So, but this is a typical example that might come to mind when you're thinking of map. Um, this also is another example that might come to mind. This is actually um, this is actually out of Power Map, um, and this is uh, this is actually using it, none of the you know Power you know fill in the blank tools for Microsoft unfortunately support spatial data. So this is actually taking a step back from the spatial data and using latitude and longitude. To create a heat map of again breweries, the breweries of of um, actually stepped out a little bit of the U.S. So this though is is kind of where I'm going to focus a lot of attention. Um, this is another example of a map, and um, I'll let you guys try and guess what this this might be. This is actually just a screenshot out of 
um, SQL Management Studio hitting against a table that has spatial data in it, and this is actually a um, this is actually a floor plan for a hotel. And this here, if that one was created from a, a, an image and went through various um, conversions to get there, but this one this one's a little cleaner picture and a, another screenshot of spatial data coming out of uh, Management Studio, um, and this is this is actually a floor plan. So this isn't the typical thing that comes to mind when you're you're dealing with spatial data, and I don't know that you know many people are aware of some of these capabilities. So I wanted to to do a presentation and focus on this side. Um, so it's definitely where we're going to focus our uh, real world example in bit. So cool. Okay. So um, going through going through some of the concepts initially, spatial data inside of SQL Server comes in two different flavors, the geometry data type, and they kind of refer to that as the flat flat model, um, and then geometry flat flat model geography. When you're dealing with latitudes and longitudes and those kinds of things, that would be using the geography data type. And here is here's the example I typically use, kind of a nice visual when um, when comparing what's the differences between those two. So you have the geometry flat Earth on the on the left side, and then the round Earth map on the right. You can see if you have a, a typical flight plan from say you know uh, Washington to Europe, it's going to look something like this. But on the round Earth, when you account for the curvature of the Earth you're going to have something that's more like this. And you can see the paths are much different, um, and, that, and that can be important. So if you need to care about the curvature of the Earth, you're going to want to use the geography data type. So, cool. Okay, so another, another little quick refresher is, um, you know, back in grade school when you first started learning about gridding, doing grids, you know, laying things out on an X, Y axis, um, Spatial data does a lot of that too. Um, so, in, when you would have um, back when you were doing it in school, you would you would dictate your points with a comma. And you can see over here on the right um, a point within the SQL Server spatial data type is actually using a space. So one point over here you can see point, and then we have three space four. That dictates the point inside of um, SQL Server. The commas come into play with um, the spatial data type when you have multiple points. So you start, so this over here, the line string, it starts, the first point is four, and then three, and then the comma. So it's when you use a comma when you're, when you're, when you need multiple points for, for what you're using. So just a little quick refresher. So, okay, so Shapes. This was a hard concept for me to grasp initially. Um, so, part of the reason that spatial data affected me so much was because I didn't. I knew nothing of it. I read about it, and um, it came out in SQL Server 2008. You know, and I was reading the you know what's new, and I read about it, but it made no sense to me. But um, you know, little little later. Um, I had a colleague who was giving us a, a presentation on it, and he he had a conflict, so he asked me if I would take over and do his presentation for him. I was I was I was like, yeah, sure, sure. I will, you know, I'm I'm all for learning new things. So I I went through the process of learning it to prepare for that presentation, and I kind of had a Oprah aha moment with it. So, um, and but part of Part of what the part of one of the concepts that was a little foreign to me initially when I started looking at it and first reading about it was the shapes. You know, I was a DBA um, at the time, and you know, kind of I, I still am a DBA, but I didn't understand. You know, Betty in accounting never asked me to store any shapes, so it was it was a little bit of a foreign concept to me. But so these these definitely aren't all the shapes, but um, want to go over kind of some of the some of the some of these shapes that we will, you know, if if they don't make sense now, just wait and I'll 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 
in the demos it, it might become more clear. So you already seen a point, you know, x, y axis. Um, you can also have uh, Z coordinates and M coordinates as well. Z is for elevation, that's pretty self-explanatory. M, the M uh, coordinate is, it, it's flexible. Anything that you can, you can, you can basically store as a, as a floating number uh, is, is available to you there. Uh, one of the examples that I, that made a little more sense to me was, um, you know, maybe like if there is a point that it, it, it can refer to um, like mile markers and those kinds of things. So it's, it's a, flexible, a flexible coordinate um, for M. Line string, we kind of already seen one of those as well, a path between two, two points or a sequence of points. Um, and polygons sound fancy, but they're really just closed two-dimensional shapes. So, so within um, within spatial data types, there are many, many, and this is this this is by no means a complete list. There are tons and tons of them. Um, these are just some of the ones that uh, I'm going to display for you guys today. So, yep. Oops, let me go back one. Sorry. So now we're done with all of the concept slides. Let's go through and start playing with this. Let me open up. I have Management Studio ready. So let's go ahead and I'm going to run this query here. Okay. So I'm basically I'm the, the I'm not really these don't exist in a table. I'm basically instantiating them here. And I'm setting, so I have the, the geography, the, excuse me. I'm setting the, ge the type as geometry, and then I'm saying, hey, this is what I want these to be, and then I select from them. So you can see here, here are my results. By default, it comes back with this. This is actually, when you, when you, when you're, there are three different formats you can display your, your um, spatial data types. So this is the um, this is the well-known binary, and this is how it's actually stored in in SQL, you know, big long binary. You can also have well-known text, and this is actually the the format well-known text. For those that really like XML, and, you know, there are those out there that, that really like XML. Um, there is also uh, GML, which is the spatial data flavor of XML. So. So okay, so anytime I also run a spatial data, a spatial data query, I have this spatial results tab that displays. So if I click on this spatial results, and I have to also give a, a, a caveat here, I am by no means a, a great artist. There are those out there that, that that might be, but I am I'm pretty pitiful as far as artists go. So um, you know, bear with me on on my you know, superb artwork here. Um, so we have the, the visualization of, of the, the, the shapes that comes back in Management Studio with the Spatial Results tab. You can also zoom in here without using Zoomit. Um, so the first one is just a plain polygon. You can see it's drawn out here, the, the various different points. You know, here's point one, point two. So okay, that's very nice. Um, and then we also have a line string. Okay, so something else with spatial data is um, sometimes you have to use your imagination. You can use your imagination a little more. You know, it's not as cut and dry as a lot of things in SQL. Um, but especially with my artwork, you have to use your imagination a bit more. But here, let me show you a couple examples of um, spatial data where you have to use your imagination a little less. So you can see here, this is you know all of the counties of of um, Indiana. And here I'm going to run this query as well, which is the same thing, but we'll, I'm going to put it to a, a um, use a function a two string. Those that are from developer backgrounds, some of these some of these functions or methods might look familiar to you. Uh, under the covers. S spatial data is a CLR data type. Now, you, it's a special one that you don't have to enable. You don't have to enable CLR 
um, you know, the DBAs don't freak out. You don't have to enable CLR. This, this is a little bit of a special one. Um, but so under the covers, since it's a CLR data type, under the covers, it's really just .NET. So let me run this here. So I'm, I'm selecting the same field, and I'm doing a two-string to it. So you can see here, each of the, each of the counties is just a polygon um, here. So and you can see the results, same results. So, so those, this is where the power and where those funky shapes kind of start making, or hopefully will start making a little bit of sense. So say I have, um, you know, voting results, you know, voting uh, patterns of the different counties. I can start tying that to these shapes, and then I can start displaying, you know, kind of visualizing my results very quickly, you know, I can create some of those, you know, like, um, you know, CNN, you know, where they're, you know, flipping the red and blue, seeing how people are voting. Um, you can do some of those. The power is tying the visuals to your data. So, and then I'll do one more quick, one more quick example where you don't have to use your imagination. And so this is very impressive. It's, it's kind of fuzzy and funky. Um, when I normally give this in in, uh, in a, a live presentation with you know live with the audience, um, I start some zooming in and then say, okay, when you know what it is, let me know. And this is about when they someone might start saying, oh, okay, yeah, that, that, those are the Great Lakes. So if I hover here, yeah, this is this is Lake Huron. It will actually so I'm I'm querying from my table and it actually will display. As I hover, so you can see here, I have you know the the lakes, the names, these things. As I query, I can pull back the, the, all of those results and hover over the different shapes and see you know, this is Lake Winnipeg. So you can see you can um, you can kind of kind of analyze your data a little bit in here. So a lot of times people ask, can you can you dictate the colors? It, it basically just gives you kind of this weird um, you know, pastel -y palette. You can't in here. You definitely can uh, with uh, you know reporting services, but in here it's just it's kind of just a you know it's it's not what the intent is for. So you can't dictate the colors inside of Management Studio. It just gives you a generic you know pastel palette. So okay, cool. So now that we kind of some of the the, the concepts of shapes might start to be clicking with some folks. I'm going to show you in that ex same example here and show you a little bit more, show, start showing you some of the functions that go with it. So here I have, I'm just selecting, so I'll show you my spatial results. This is the same example I showed, you know, this lovely you know, square and line. Um, so I'm just selecting those initially and show you that it, this is the same thing. Um, but kind of going back to um, back to kind of trying to put this with a real example. Say, for example, I work for the EPA, and you know I, I have to I have to send out reports based on you know uh, uh, you know based on pollution levels, or if there's a large spill, I have to I have to help create the reports um, based on that. So here I'm showing you. This is just selecting. So for this first example, let's say, let's pretend, you know, use, use, our, use our imaginations. We don't get to with SQL Server very often. Use our imaginations and say, OK, this is a, uh, an area that is affected by an oil spill. OK? And then this, it's a very straight section of a river. So use your imagination again, very, very straight section of a river. So this third one here is the ST union. So I'm doing a union to say, okay, let's take a look at the area that is impacted by this oil spill with, you know, with the river. So we're just doing a union there. This one here uh, is a little harder to visualize, but you can see here this is actually um, the river that is not impacted by this oil spill. So you can see this, this square is actually removed and you can see that the difference there. So you know there I can say okay this part of the river 
the fish are okay. You're, you're okay to eat the fish. You don't have to. You don't have to not eat the fish in this section of the river that's impacted by the oil spill. If you see this one, this one is definitely a little harder to visualize, but this is the ST intersection of those two, and this is the area of the very straight river uh, that is impacted by the oil spill. So I can send out a report saying, "Hey, don't eat the fish here. These are." bad fish, they look, you know, you don't want to eat these fish, they're the three-eyed Simpson fish. So, cool? Okay. So, all of the ones that we've seen, all of the examples we've seen so far have been geometry. I'm going to do one for geography. So, I'm going to run this. You can see I'm doing the, basically the same thing. I'm saying this is the geography data type. And here, what I'm doing is this STG geome from text is basically a function that says, hey, I'm going to pass you the human readable form of, of the, and this is actually, this point is a latitude and longitude. One thing I'll mention, um, everybody refers to it as latitude then longitude. This is actually longitude then latitude because it, it, it needs to be passed in the XY axis format. So, so, okay, so we have our latitude and longitude. This here is, um, is uh, the spatial reference ID. Um, spatial reference IDs, and I'll show you a little bit more about that in, in just a second. Um, they're basically the rules that I'm going to, I, I want to follow for my spatial data. Um, so, okay, so I'm picking two different points. Um, I'm picking Triton Brewery, which is one of my favorite local breweries. And then I'm picking just a, another spot. So I picked uh, Monument Circle in downtown Indy. So then I'm going to do the ST distance between those. So let's execute that. Okay. So it comes back with this result set here. Um, and this is, <laughs> we'll have to pretend people are going, hmm, well, that's interesting. This is where I typically will pause and say, does anybody have any questions? Um, and I'm, I'm kind of prepping for for uh, a question here of, okay, so we'll pretend somebody asks, well, what is, you know, what's the distance? What, what unit of measure is that distance? And then I would say, oh, that's a good question. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> so then I have this. So I mentioned the spatial reference ID. I'm, I'm basically just saying, hey, so where my spatial reference ID, when my spatial reference ID is 4326, what is that unit of measure? What is that unit of measure? And it's in meters. So that distance that I displayed was in meters. Um, you can see here there are many. Uh, da, 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 my computer is being a little slow today. This should not take very long. Okay, there we go. So um, you can see here there are 391 different spatial reference uh, spatial reference IDs available. Um, you can see here, I'll scroll in just a little bit for you guys. So, um, the, uh, there are different, different parts of the world obviously use different, um, different units of measure. There are also, so the, the, the spatial reference IDs are actually, um, are rules dictated by the EPSG. And they are actually tied to the um, petroleum, they, and they do these surveys from time to time. So you can see a certain, when they have these um, num when they have these years associated with them, that is that refers to when the survey was done. So Jamaica in 1875, they would be using Clark's feet. Um, so that's what that that's giving you kind of the well-known text version so you can see where these different spatial spatial IDs and you can see there there are tons tons of them. You can also see too that most of them are in meters. Um, I'm kind of just scrolling through. The majority of them are in meters. There are also feet, Indian feet, Clark's feet, um, and then radians and US survey feet. But the default if you don't specify a a a, D, a spatial reference ID 4326 is going to be your um, the default that it uses. So cool. Okay, so I'm going to show you just just a few more examples. Um, 
2000, so like I said uh, before, SQL, spatial data came out in SQL 2008. Along the line, we had um, up, you know, uh, updates to the spatial, um, spatial data within SQL Server. 2012 was a big year for the spatial data type. Uh, let me go ahead and run this. So, you. Um, let me show you the results here. So, there are, are um, there are also different collections you can have of of spatial data. So you can have um, collections. You can have this this first one. This compound curve is actually empty. Just FYI, you can have empty ones in case you would you would want to. Um, but let me scroll down a little bit. And I tried to get just a little fancier in my artwork again. Um, so this compound curve, what this is, is basically a dot-to-dot -dot system to be able to draw comp more complex shapes. It's also built, and this came out in 2012, a, uh, it's built up a circular string. So we have, ah, oh, I just messed that all up. Hang on. Okay. Let's see if I put that right. So it's built of this circular string, and you have a start point, you have an end point, and you have a curve point. So the curve point is where I'm curving through in this circular string. So you can see here, this one starts right here. So we're at 1, 0, we curve through, 0, 1, and then back again. So this, this first portion is this here. <laughs> I am terrible at drawing freehand as well. So, but you can see, and then it picks up this second portion of the com of the the compound curve picks up here and goes from here to here. The thing with compound curves, it's a dot. It has to begin and end at the same point, or it will freak out on you. So, um, I'm also doing an st buffer, which is basically just fattening up the lines so you guys can see them better. Um, so I have that first one. That's great. Someone said it looked like a baseball cap. I, I agree. Um, this one here, I was trying to get a little fancier as well. Um, it looks, I, keep, I think of this one as, a, it looks like the, the, uh, a symbol on a Led Zeppelin album to me. But, so, um, you can see here I'm also doing a, an ST is valid. So, if I'm pulling in data, I can check the validity of these shapes that are coming in. So you can see here, each one of these shapes returns a 1. So it says, is this valid? And it's coming back true. If we take and change this guy, and it doesn't begin and end at the same point, you can see this is going to come back and give us a, an error and say, yep, you, you know, this, they all look like this, or they all start with this. A .NET framework error has occurred. Da, da, da. So it's, it's basically saying, you know, sequential parts of the curve must have one common endpoint. So we broke it, and we can go back here and see, oh, yep, these aren't valid anymore. Let me see, I broke a couple of them. So, so let me put that back. I broke more than just one. I think I broke that first one. But anyways, um, we should go back, and oh, the second one is broke. So I'd have to go back and I, I <laughs> when I was copying and pasting, I think I, I think it, yeah, it might be this. Sorry, the DBA in me wants to fix it really fast. Eh, I'll have to go back and look, but you get the idea. So we broke the um, we broke the compound curve. So okay, so we've seen we've seen some examples. Um, I'm going to show you one one more quick fun one. So um, I'm not one for bold statements. I'm, I very rarely will say anything is, you know, if you try and pin me down on my favorite song, I, I hem and haw, and I won't, you know, it depends on what genre, it depends on all these things. You know, there are very few things I'll say, this is the best or the greatest of all time, but I think I wrote the geekiest query of all time. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys this. So I'm creating a curve polygon. 
I'm going to go ahead and run this. Okay, completed successfully. The squiggly lines made me a little nervous. Okay, so let me scroll up here. So I am creating more geometry data types. I, I have a curved polygon. Uh, a, a, I also have a geometry collection, which is another one of those collect. It's a collection of you know various different um, various different shapes here. So okay. So I have that, so I'm going to go over here. So this is my first one I'm selecting, so I have this. And this, this, this took me, I spent way, way more time than I probably should have. I'm not a great artist, so it took me a long time to do this. Um, so I have this first shape here. Then I have this, this shape here. And then I am... I'm selecting both of those, and then I'm doing a shortest line to, and also buffering it. So, so then, <laughs> so this here is instantiating. So it's basically saying, hey, between these two shapes, the shortest line to. So, it is not every day you get to recreate a scene from, hopefully you guys, hopefully my artwork was, was good enough that you guys saw that <laughs> where this was going. It's not every day you get to recreate a scene from Star Wars in Management Studio. So, very cool. And I also did a two string on this to where if, so now I have the shape of the truck, I, I was able, I can, I was able to instantiate and then now I can this is this is the the line string that creates the tractor beam pulling in the Millennium Falcon. Cool. You guys will have to let me know if you think this is the you know, if this is the geekiest query of all time. I think I think I have a good shot here with this. So, okay. Um, <laughs> let me jump back to the slides, and now we'll get from from the examples and the concepts and all of that to setting up our real world demo. Yep, we're doing okay on time. So now that we have that, we have some of the concepts down. We, we you know, hopefully everybody that wasn't familiar with spatial data had their Oprah aha moment with me, and you know, starting to, to get some of the some of the power and capabilities of it. But let's go through and set up. You know, I'm putting my consulting hat on here, and we'll set up the the business need first. So. So, I am the proprietor now of a um, of a hotel. And it's called Plaza del Hope, and I have um, when they constructed my, my my beautiful hotel, I have the CAD file from that. So, what a CAD file is, if you're not familiar with it, it is basically blueprint files that construction, uh, you know, kind of computerized blueprint files that construction types use to build the buildings. Um, so I have that from the construction of my hotel and then I just I, I store my uh, my uh, run-of-the-mill hotel data inside of SQL Server. So I have you know just tables with you know customers and when they're staying and, and those kinds of things. Um, so my business need is I don't really have great reporting on when when someone calls my hotel and sets up a, a, a room block, I don't have very good reporting on that, and I you know I also don't have super great reporting on on my hotel guests, and, and I want to I want to I want to help with that. So so I did do a little bit of the you know baking of the cake ahead of time. So what I did was I had I had access to the CAD file. And I knew if I got my my CAD file changed to a shape file format, I can then import that inside of SQL Server. So what I did was um, as I had access to the Esri ArcGIS for desktop application. They Esri is a company that's been doing mapping for oodles and oodles of time. Um, they uh, so I had access to that program and. Um, if you have a certain level of access uh, or a certain level of license of that program, you could take a CAD file and directly insert it into SQL Server. I didn't have that version, 
But again, I knew if I could get it into a shapefile format, I could then uh, import it in the SQL Server. So there are other programs out there that will help you do that. Um, there are some, some free tools that will help you do that. Uh, and if you're very familiar, I'm not super familiar with the CAD programs, any of the, you know, the you know, CAD or Auto Rivet or any of those. Um, so I didn't have um, a lot of time. I know that some of those programs will actually allow you to export them to shape files. So, but in the end, I knew if I got it into a shape file format, I could get it into SQL Server. What I used after that was um, a program. It's it's uh, it's actually from an open source library of tools, and I give you guys access um, in in the resources here. I have have all of the the resources I use. Um, so there was there is a command line program called OGR to OGR. And what I did was I took the shape file, so I converted my CAD file to a shape file, and then I used OGR to OGR to import that into a SQL server, um, a SQL server table. So then I had spatial data inside of SQL Server for my CAD file. Some CAD files if this was a real example, my CAD file, you know, I'm, I was I was basically using this for demo purposes. So my data, the CAD file data, wasn't going to tie to what I had. Um, but in a CAD file, you can have attributes of the different shapes that might relate to your room number. I didn't have that luxury, so I had to go and take my my spatial data and tie it to my my other tables that contain room numbers. I'll show you that. So I think that's it. So um, here is uh, here is on the right a the the CAD a view of the CAD file that I had. It was stripped down. Um, I didn't want a lot of the layers that it comes with. I didn't need to see the pipes and the everything else. Uh, CAD files have all of tons of information in them. Um, I was basically wanting to get to the in the end to the floor plan of it. And so you can see here on the right is the view of the CAD file. And over on the left, this is actually a CAD file from the JW Marriott in Indianapolis. So, cool. All right, so let's go out and take a look at this. So here I'll show you. I'll show you real quick. So this is the, the spatial. I imported this into this table. And you can see I, had too, I have too many... I'm, I have too many objects to display, and I'll actually zoom in so you can see kind of some of the detail here. You can see, so this is one of the rooms. Here's the the bathroom, you know, so I could, well, that might not be that. I'm sorry, that, nope, I go up here. So here's the bathtub, the sink, and the toilet. I could get really fancy, and I can go back and, you know, I have the shapes for all of these things. Um, I could start tying my maintenance information to this if I, if I wanted to. Um, so that was my, my table that has, if I hover, you can see, I have a, an OGR underscore FID. So that's the ID of the spatial data shape. And then I have here, this is just, um, so I created this table that basically tied my room number, which my data has a lot of room number information, and tied it to... So I had to go through this process and tie my room number to my OGR FID. So that was a little tedious. You guys might luck out, and if you would do this, you might luck out and be and have the attributes of that in your CAD file. You may not have to do that. So here is the gist of what I was trying to get. So I'm, gonna, I'm weeding out all of those other shapes, and I'm, I'm just tying the ones that tie to... Uh, room number. So now you can see I have um, I have the layout of my hotel, each of the rooms in my hotel, or on one floor of my hotel. So cool. Okay, so I'm going to grab this this query here. I'm going to go and I'm going to open up Report Builder if I can spell it right. Just regular old Report Builder. It's been around forever and ever. We're doing okay on time. Yeah, we're doing okay. 
So I am going to do a map. I'm just going to do the map wizard. Um, you can see here I could have had a shape. Uh, reporting services will allow you to have shape layers. Um, if, if I wanted, I could have used the shape file, but I wanted it to, to tie actually to my data. So, so I'm going to do that. We're going to do a spatial query. I am going to create a new data set and a new data source real fast. We're going to call this Ho. Come on, Bessie, catch up with me. Hotel data. I'm going to build it. It's just on my local host here. And I'm going to tie it to outside map spatial data, test it. Say OK, say OK. OK, so I have my data source. And I'm going to edit as text and just paste this, this um, query. I don't want to waste your guys' time trying to <laughs> type that out. So, OK, so we have our, we're, this is basically just our first layer. I'm going to say next, and it's going to give me the visual of it, and that's great. You can see here I can add a Bing map layer if I was doing something other than, than than, uh, you know, if I was doing like addresses or something like that. Okay, so we have that. That's good. And we're going to do a basic map. I'm going to pick generic and a single color map. I just want the floor plan. I'm, this is just the blank floor plan here. Okay, so let's call this hotel guest report uh, room Block. Okay, so that's lovely, but it needs more. So it, this is where I go very infomercial with you guys and say, but wait, there's more. So we're going to do another layer here. We're going to do a new, add a new data set against the same data source. We don't have to do that part again. I'm gonna edit this text. I'm going to go grab this next query. And you can see I have a parameter. So OK. And it's going to say, oh, you have a parameter. What would you like it to be? So I'm going to say 4, 4, 2, 1, 4. Say OK. OK. So you can see here I'm getting a little more information. So I have my room number information, but I also have a customer information in here. So I have the polygons, and then I have, I have you know, these various guests in my hotel. So um, this is Hope Demo Land, so I can have anybody I want stay in my hotel. So we have interesting people, like Bradley Cooper is staying. He's, he's got a double room. That's why this is, this is showing. So Dwayne Johnson, he's also staying as well. So I'm going to say OK. Anytime you have a, a, um, a spatial data type, with a parameter, it starts to freak out on this part here. So then it's like, I can't, I don't know how to visual, it doesn't pass the parameter to this visualization, so it gives you this weird generic cluster of countries, it looks like. So that's okay, we're fine. I'm going to say next, I'm going to do another basic map. Same thing here. Okay, so this is not very impressive right now. Um, I need to go to the polygon properties. And I'm going to change the color. Right now it would be white on white, which would definitely not be very helpful. So I'm going to just choose it as gray. OK. Um, I'm going to also, while we're here, I'm going to go to the parameter properties. I'm going to say this is a date. And it's a date time. I'm going to set a default value. I'm going to say 4, 1, 4, 2, 1, 4. So every time I run it, it will at least pop up that day's work. So if we run it, and we what? OK, so I messed up something here. My, I have kids home and my dog, and I knew one of those would, would not. Let's say no here. I think it's barking at me because of what is going on here. It doesn't really like my 
Sorry about this, guys. Let me try and just do that layer again. That would probably be easier. Um, let's specify this one. And I'm going to label, say next, here. Let's see where it breaks. So, can that all down properties? Need it to be something other than white. Let's say okay. Huh. This is new. Okay, I deleted that parameter. Sorry guys. Let me add that layer one more time. I'm gonna create the new data set all new. I'm going to make sure I have this correct. Against the same data source, edit as text. Okay. Oh, 2014. Okay, that's good. That's expected. We say okay, we say next. Generic single color. Let's run this. Okay, so at least we're okay now. It's white on white, so <laughs> it's a terrible, terrible looking. So let's do the polygon properties again. Fill. Okay. Come on, cooperate with me. There we go. Okay, so now we can see where our hotel guests are staying in the on the, the floor of the, the hotel room. So not sure where I went wrong there, but I apologize for that, guys. So we have this parameter. You know what, we'll just leave it alone and not tempt fate again. <laughs> so, okay, so we have that. But wait, there's more. We're going to do another layer here. And it's going to be of the spatial data type again. And we're doing a new data set against the same data source. Edit as text. I'm going to go grab another layer here. Make sure I grab everything correctly. Okay. Run this for one four two zero one four. Okay, so here is where I'm pulling in uh, the the um, the room block information. So I can see. Okay, I have a SQL Saturday group. Dwayne Johnson is with the SQL Saturday group, and we have David Beckham who's coming with the the youth hockey team. I remember those guys were were fairly both of those were fairly loud the last time they stayed in a hotel, so I have to remember that. It's going to freak out again. Um, I'm going to choose a color analytic map this time, and I'm going to pick the data set that we just created. I want to visualize the CONV, which is the the uh, room block, and then you know yellow, green, red is fine. We'll just leave that. So let's run this. We'll say four one four two zero one four. And view the report. Okay, so now you can see I can see where my hockey teams are in relation to the other guests in my hotel, which is great. I'm going to also show you too. Um, let me go back and remove this this guy out of the way so we can fully see that. Okay, let's see, okay. We have that. I'm going to show you the next night, and let's see here. Uh, the report. Okay, very nice. So we have a couple different groups coming in on a couple different nights, and we have the knitting club and the mime convention that's coming into town. Those those groups are much quieter than the youth hockey team. 
So, but wait, there's more. I'm going to really quick for you guys. I know we're getting close on time, so I am going to grab this. Copy that. Go back here, and I'm going to just set a data set here. I'm going to call this complaints. And embed it in my report. And it's going to use the hotel data. Okay. And let's say okay. So I have a complaints data set, which is going to grab information from my complaint table that I also have. Then I am going to I'm going to grab this second layer and go to the polygon properties of it. I'm going to create a tooltip here against that data set. Say okay. Okay. Say okay. Say okay. Now, hopefully the kinks are worked out with our 2014. Say okay. View the report. So now, if I hover, I get my customer information, and if they have any complaints um, in the complaints table, I can see. So this Joffrey Baratheon has complained of noise. I was going through a Game of Thrones period when I, when I created this as well. Um, Cersei, uh, she's complained of noise two times in the past. So the type of complaint, hover when I hover over it, the type of complaint is displayed and um, and how many times they are they have entries in in my complaints table. So very cool. So now I can see, okay, well Cersei is going to be in the hotel for a couple nights. Let's take a look at the next night and I might want to put her next to um, you know Ryan Gosling in the you know he's in with the mind convention. who knew but I might be better served to put Cersei in that um, that that room next to him than than the youth hockey team. So I'm drawing insights, you know, from my data before I even before I even um, have any issues. So all my customers keep my customers happy. So very cool. Okay, so um, we're getting close on time. Here are the the resources that I've used uh, for this. Um, actually, um, um, there is I, I did something with Power Map, but it's not very very spectacular. I'll just I'll just mention it. And I can I can show that in a minute. Dan, I, does, do we have any questions before I I would show that? Yes, let's see here. We do have a few questions. Um, someone was just inquiring whether or not you'd be able to make any of your scripts or database files available as part of this, or I'm not sure if you're open to that at all or if it would be useful. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. I'll, I can definitely share uh, some of the some of the stuff I have. Some of the, some of it's uh, a little bit proprietary, and I uh, correct. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I'll definitely share. Uh, I have all of the scripts and everything available for sure. So. Great. And then someone said that now that spatial results tab, that'll show up anytime you run a query with geometry or spatial data, correct? There's nothing extra that they have to turn on in nope. Management Studio? Nope. Yep. Anytime you, you hit a table um, that, that's using spatial data, it will, it will display that. Yep. And then we have a question about if, if you know about the OGR to OGR, can that be used to batch load a bunch of shapefiles at the same time? Oh, I've not tried that, but I would think so. It's just a command line, so if you, you know, you could potentially, yeah, I, yeah, I, w I would think you could. I haven't actually done gone through the steps to do that, but yeah. I, and are I would, there I would any types of restrictions that you know of with regards to what version of SQL Server that they use with that? I mean, could they use it even with Azure SQL database? Mm -hmm. I would think so, but I haven't tested that. Um, and I was using everything I was doing with this was 20. I believe I initially set it up in 2012, um, and then now I'm using 2014. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, I guess I any more questions? Here? Nope. I think that covers it. Cool. I was going to show if we. I guess we have we got two minutes. I was going to show you guys really quick. Um, 
you can do custom maps with Power Map now. Um, but and and on my blog, I have a bit of this process. Um, this isn't very. <laughs> I was trying to see if what I could do to recreate what I did in the reporting services report. Um, this will basically, and I'll just show you kind of this. It'll show. I, I created a tour that basically shows the um, where the hotel guests are staying, which isn't isn't super impressive. So you can see she's not going to go. Um, Oh, there she goes. Uh, so, not super impressive. Um, I was able to tie my data to, and this is actually just using the JPEG file. So I had to go through the process of using the JPEG file to, and I have to, to, I had to open up that file and paint, and then lay out the X Y axes of where things are on the image file, and tie it to my room numbers. So kind of the same process I had to do with um, tying the spatial data to here, but instead using just the, the image file. So it, you can do some things with, with Power Map, um, but like I said before, they don't inherently support the spatial data type, so you kind of have to step back a little bit from it. Well, cool. I, I appreciate Dan. Thanks for thanks for having me speak today. And here's my information. I'm definitely please give feedback if you have. If, uh, I, I I love to make these better. And thank you guys for for joining today. Well, thank you so much, Hope. We're uh, very glad that we're, you were able to present to us today. Um, thanks for all the great content. Uh, we got a lot of good feedback. Um, if you guys are going to be out at Pass Summit, definitely check out Hope. She's going to be out there presenting on a tabular performance. So make sure you check that out. Uh, thanks, everyone, for attending today. Uh, the recording will be made available later this afternoon, and we'll get all the event information posted to the event site. And uh, when you sign off, uh, make sure you fill out the evaluation for us. Thanks so much. Thanks again, Hope. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah, no, no problem. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, everybody. See you.